Warning! This podcast contains minor spoilers. What's up, everyone, and welcome to the As Seen on TV podcast for Agent Carter, Episode 3, uh, Time and Tide. I'm your host, Mike, and joining me are some usual faces, Erica and Rachel. And we got a, a John and a Cleo. Hello. I'm unusual. He is unusual. <laughs> That's true. And I have nothing to follow that up with. So how's everybody doing? All right. Not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> Same. Another good episode that we had mm-hmm. here. Um, I want to open up by talking about the master ninja assassin who was climbing the drain pipe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't yeah. know how else I could yeah. have expected that to go. But, yeah, guy climbs a drain pipe, gets a gun pulled on him, and it's like, is this apartment 3F? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Does it look like it? Like that? Th- does it look like it's apartment three F? Do I look like your girlfriend? I'm pointing a gun at you. Your girlfriend has blonde hair. I have brown hair. You think you know the difference? You would think. And I'm British. Yeah, and that, she's British. That too. He re- he's a little <clears throat> tired from climbing so high. You know, he. he... I was waiting for the drain pipe to fall and go backwards. <laughs> now that that was one of those things where. Or you really ex- expect it to be, you know, one of the hitmen to come after after you know Peggy Carter, and it's just no, it's just a horny guy looking for his girlfriend. Yeah. Yes. Well. And there's the whole no men above the first floor rule. So, climb the drain pipe. But to be fair, he didn't take the stairs. He didn't take the stairs. And speaking of which, how the hell and I. I'm proud of this nickname. How did Queen Hardass Paragon of celibacy, celibacy know that Jimmy climbed up the drain pipe in the first place? <laughs> it wasn't exactly quiet. Yeah, probably one of the other girls reported him. Yeah, we got to hear somebody. We got a snitch in the house. Oh, snitch. and you hear this, this guy is, is hanging off by his fingers trying to climb across the windows. He's going to have his feet kicking windows, probably. Yeah. I guess yeah. someone saw him. Either that or she just, you know, was on the roof taking in the night air <laughs> figuring out whose blood to suck next and then realized, hey, look, there's a man climbing my building. You no, know, I think she probably would have uh, went in and went like, hey, if she would have. Mm-hmm. And, uh... She would have taken a brick and spotted him off the... Oops, I dropped my favorite brick. <laughs> yeah, oops, I dropped my favorite brick. You think she was a bit of harsh, though? You know, go pack your bags, you're out of here. Like... Bye. That's <laughs> the door hitch. That's the kind of places they were in back then. I I guess yeah. Yeah, guess back there it's kind of like a boarding house. Um. Yeah, they enforce the rules. Respectable. Respectable. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's respectable. <laughs> All I know is Miss Fry needs to get laid. She probably needs to do a lot of things. Is she probably does. So, last week, we had spoken about Jarvis's wife possibly not existing and being just this whole construct he made up. Disembodied woman. She's a disembodied void now. Well, it's obvious that he's not throwing his voice. No, he's not. Right. She's She's a real person. Her name is Anna. She's Jewish, and she's from Budapest. Budapest. That was really Mm -hmm. kind of funny. Mm -hmm. Because I watched... I watched the the episode three, and then afterwards I was like, okay, I'm going to go ahead and watch last week's episode of, of this show so that I can know what y'all talked about so that in case anything comes up. And I start hearing Dom throwing all these crazy ideas about how she doesn't exist. I'm like, no, she clearly exists. They proved it. Yes, now they did this week. <laughs> yeah, now they did, but last this episode we didn't have a, like... I thought she was real. I believed... I believe I, 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 do. Do. I didn't think she was either. I'm, I, I was do, kind of I do, 
do, I do, oh, I do goodness. believe in spooks. Sorry. We lost an Erica's <laughs> camera. I've just watched what was oh, there. Yay. Oh. Um, yeah, I believe too, but Dom spun in a. He spun a good tale. Oh, dude, Dom's. A good theory. Spin a cat's tail around, making them. I like how we're blaming Dom, but I'm pretty sure I brought it up first. Well, because. And I was the yeah. one who said it in the first place, so I, I'm pretty sure this is all my fault, so I apologize. Well, <laughs> The, the impression I got from the video, it was just uh, like a Reddit rumor, which is uh, almost accurate. Uh, uh, possibly. Yeah. Yeah. It's possible. Because <laughs> he was like, the going theory on the internet is, you know. That's possible. The internet's never wrong. No, it's never wrong. It's not wrong. Didn't you know that? They can't tell lies on the internet. Right. Ooh. No, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's why would you? Yeah. Know, right? If you see it on Facebook, it must be true. Yeah, I know. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. The internet police will come says. get you. You don't have to bother checking sources or anything. It's probably true. The yeah, internet Yeah, I think that means it's real. So, Jarvis, Sergeant Snark. I love this man. Uh, come on! It's like, I One could the... lose a fountain pen on Fifth Avenue. You know, I always things, got though. the idea, I always got the feeling that he was ex-military. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some kind. You know, one of the, one of the things that I, I loved about seeing Jarvis in like, these three episodes, and then like going back and watching this show was like how y'all brought up the point how it's not the same actor that plays Jarvis the butler and Jarvis the computer program, but yet you can see how the computer program is so mm -hmm. clearly modeled after Jarvis the real life person. So it's, oh yeah, well I'm I, sure I, he I grew like up that with touch. Him. I like that touch in the in the show. Yeah, oh, yeah. I'm sure he grew up. He grew up with him in his life. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's called him Jarvie. Jarvie. It's <laughs> totally there. We're going with where we're going with it. So, what did you think Jarvis did to get him accused of treason in the first place and kicked out of the military to boot? I had well, no idea he, at first. Hmm? He said he tells her at, at but he when they says. first. Well, yeah, he says um, later, but when they first accused him and told him about that, I had no clue what he would have done. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought it was just something they were making up. Like, like you know how, how they were, in the first episode or so, they were beating the guy's face in, so obviously they don't care to, you know, break what we would consider morality nowadays. Right, yeah. and the so it's just like know. They're lying straight up to the guy's face. Oh, we know why, you know, such and such... Just kind of hoping. You know, if they knew, scared. then they would know about his wife, and they would. Well, they do know about his wife, but they would know that it wasn't really treason. Well, they knew he had his car was reported stolen. They had the <laughs> report. It's like, where's the report? Waves it in her face, like it's lost in the system. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> so yeah, obviously, I don't care. I, I had no idea. I thought he did some kind of crazy badass thing, but turns out it was steal a letter. He that would and forge, forge a, a general signature, signature to get his wife out of Budapest, Budapest. In, into America. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Worth it, I guess. I mean, she must have been one of the hot piece of ass. I was hoping he would, ha you know, kind of hulk out and beat the crap out of it, start beating the crap out of Agent Thompson because <laughs> the look on his face when they brought his wife into it, I was like, uh oh. Well, he's a he's a cool he's a cool cool cat. He, he he knows how to do it under pressure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then Peggy gets him out, but uh, I think that set her back a little bit in the agency. More so. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say, how much farther is she going to be scrubbing the floors now? I mean, one step from that anyways, in their mind. I guess. The boss, the boss already didn't want her there. Yeah. But now he has the excuse to call her what he's been calling her this whole time, which is just, like, a burden. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now he has proof. Until she becomes like, his oh, boss. Yeah, you <laughs> yeah, until she becomes his boss. That's, yeah, pretty yeah. much. I think it might actually work for her cover, though, because it's kind of putting oh, this, this, this character of, of uh, incompetent person yeah. Whereas before it was just it was just why are you here? Now it's more like you lost a major file that caused caused me to to derail an entire investigation. 
why are you know mm-hmm. why are you even at this level? Not not, not even necessarily here, yeah. You know? mm-hmm. Make divert the yeah. suspicion away from her. Yeah. Well, it worked. Yeah, yeah. It's it's also hurting her to to have to be known as this incompetent person. Hmm. Yeah. And um, moving right along here. Take her remote. <laughs> was I the only one who thought the blonde chick was sus- that was moving into the other blonde Dot? chick? Dot. Is that her name? Dottie. That was it. I yeah, Dottie. Mm-hmm. Dorothy. Her name was Dorothy. From Iowa. All I need to say was Kansas. Nah, dog. <laughs> yeah, right. So, Dorothy. Mm-hmm. Anybody else get the heebie-jeebies from this woman? She's a little sister. Yeah. I have my theories. She's at the end. But, uh, totally. You know. We'll wait till you get there. Mm-hmm. I don't. I don't mm-hmm. know. I mean, she's I don't know enough about her to to think she's bad. I don't know. It's just the way they introduced her. Like, look, this is the chick who's replacing the other chick. I just threw out on the street. Like, that's well, I mean, look, they're both blonde, so they're basically the same. They're to me, basically it made the same. To me, it made sense that that the place would have a waiting list or so. And so, like the yeah. second this woman gets kicked out, well, here's the next one. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know either. And d- yeah, you think Angie's being a bit oversensitive though? Like you barge. Angie's in- over clingy girlfriend. I know she barges into <laughs> Peggy's room, tells her, sits down on her bed, says, "Let's get drunk and eat a lot of pie." And she's like, "I was actually just about to go to bed." She's. I I thought about it like this. She's that friend that when you are down to hang out and you're hanging out, time your life. But when it's when it's not, it's just like she's a crazy person. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> You're gonna be my friend forever. We're gonna be friends <laughs> forever. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah, she was a little over attached, girlfriendish. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> I don't know. Creepy. I'm like that a lot. <laughs> Maybe not barging into somebody's bedroom like, hey, right. let's do this. But, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. But it's like it's like I text people like, hey, what are you doing tonight? I've, you know, oh, I can't get out. I have the kids, or or I don't have any money, or I'm like, well, eh, at least she okay. Asks. She's just like, yeah, she just barges she's in. Bar- like, she's like, like oh, bitch, like, I got just... schnapps and pie. Schnapps <laughs> and pie. This sounds like a start of a bad word. <laughs> well, she said she's like, I have a half a bottle of schnapps and half a rhubarb pie. Let's eat both. Of- Let's see which one makes us sick first. All right. Ooh, rhubarb pie. It depends on the kind of schnapps she had. Was it peach? Was it peppermint? What was it? Who the heck knows? Back. It was rhubarb. It was rhubarb, rhubarb. schnapps and rhubarb. Rhubarb pie. schnapps. <laughs> oh, and rhubarb the pie. Face. Oh. Oh, the face. <laughs> so. Pour, pour the schnapps into the pie. Yes. Uh. Off of, getting off of that topic before our are everywhere. <laughs> Sorry. So we know, we, all just we, know, we know how the crooks got everything out of Stark's vault. They dropped it through the floor into the sewer and rode the floodwaters out into the river, which genius. Woo-hoo! Um, Sewer store cowboys. So the stolen thingies are on the boat. And we have a couple things to go over here. One, I love Jarvis's American accent. This is oh, it's his, oh my god! His, his I love, hey, Bob. I just love that whole role playing scene where he's he's pretending to be the cop and working her through her story. Right, exactly. That that was just that was I love that part. Yeah, and um, that one right there, it was like, yep, he was definitely something. I, I don't know if he was high up in the military, but he was pretty. He did stuff, you know. He did stuff. He did stuff. He the, did stuff. The army. <laughs> but yeah, um, that was a. That's a good one, because uh, she was all ready to call it in and be like, hey, guys, I found Stark's missing stuff. Like, okay, first off, what are you doing in the field out there? How'd you find it? Yeah. There's a list of a thousand questions she didn't yep. think of. There's a, there's There are more questions about why she's there and how she found than actually that she found the items. That would be, like, second thought to them. Yeah. Their first thought would be, like, how she know? Is she connected to Stark? Is she working with him? It, I mean, the Finding the stuff would take the back seat. Yeah. So Yeah. She just really wants respect. Yeah. Of course she wants what she had 
in the war. She wants, yeah, she wants what she had in the war, which lovely American yeah. spies are not giving to her. <laughs> so what else do you think are in these boxes of Starks? I mean, we already know that there was a recipe for an implosion device. Now we have, there's an atomic back, that, an atomic back massager. That crushes your bones. Tightens your muscles. Well, I don't want a back massager. Well, it tightens, it tightens it your muscles so much it crushes your bones. Well, yeah. it is atomic powered. I mean, it was growing that, green. That, right. that doesn't sound like something I want to touch. <laughs> John puts his vote in for atomic chicken. Would no, you say? magnetic, magnetic chicken. Magnetic chicken. He thinks like, there's a magnetic chicken. I like when they stuck it up to, stuck it to the guy. Yeah, they stuck that thing to the guy and and uh, used it on his arm. And she was like, "Oh, that works." Yeah. And he's like, "Not as a back massager." So another big guy oh, gets gross. kicked. Hey. Imagine on a man's spine. No, Ugh. but no. obviously, and and well, when he got there, she that. was like, "I'm not going to take it easy on your heels." I was told that. Yeah, and mm -hmm. so I and he knew that she was eventually was going to come. Yeah, they knew she was coming. So, mm -hmm. who else? I don't know how many people are in Leviathan. Does it go as far as Hydra? Mm hmm. Yes, mm. probably. Has well, to. we know don't we know what Leviathan is, right? Yes, not in the show. <laughs> well, yeah, no, not but in us the show. Us. Yeah, no. We know it's like the Russian version of Hydra. Yeah, yeah, yeah. or their equivalent. But yeah, yeah, so far in the show, we have no idea what they are. It's Leviathan. It's ooh, spooky. <laughs> another head of Hydra. Remember? Yes, another head of Hydra. <laughs> So, they got the stolen goods back. Dooley says, don't blow up Manhattan. They don't blow up Manhattan. <laughs> How obvious was it that Krizminski was dead? Like, when that scene started. I mean, he's alone with yeah. the big muscular guy. Yeah, the big muscular guy. As soon as he turned the corner and there, I saw the car following. Oh, no, as soon yeah. as the scene started, it's like, oh, come on, really? Why is he the only guy in the car with the prisoner? Why doesn't he have a partner? Yeah. This guy is fucking oh. dead. I thought that, too. I'm, yeah. like, strong, yeah. I'm like, Popeye the Sailor back there is going to reach up, choke the guy, you know, choke his lights out, steal the car, and do it all with a broken arm. I don't think he would have done it because he was in so much See, pain. He's like, I need to go to the doctor. He goes, I need to go to the hospital. My arm is broken. He was, I, I no, know. I think I, he knew that if they didn't get out of there he was gonna get up by that which is i think it's a lady yes the i think it's dot Blonde. i think it's dot oh because oh. it was very tall and slender yes. but the way they walk that person walked in the suit was very femme like and the shoulders look like shoulder pads they don't look yeah. it, it looked like it, a it was it was not even not even the way she was walking but notice before that because the way they framed her was like, let's get angles where you kind of can't tell it's a lady. And I'm like, hold on, that's definitely a lady. Yes. Maybe oh, maybe they brought in Dot. Dot, yeah. I didn't even pick that that's up. Good. Yeah, I didn't I even pick that up. As soon as I, like, I was like, it could be a woman, because it's a very slender frame, but then I saw her walk away when she walked back to the car, and I was just like, mm -hmm. that's a woman walk. That isn't a man walk. And that mm -hmm. adds more to the Dot as a, suspi a suspi blah, 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 suspicious Sus cookie. Yeah, that's my theory. That's I, I could be wrong, but Stitches. it seems it could fit. Huh. Yeah, yeah. My last that's question. That's pretty good. Yeah, that Damn. is. Damn, Damn you, Dot. Way to go, Doth. Mm -mm. Master assassin, replacement Doth. for drain yeah. pipe climbing boyfriend lady. <laughs> so my last question to ask everybody. What made Krizminski so loved by the whole office? Every, all the ladies out front were crying their eyes out. Everybody was depressed. I mean, the guy seemed like... I wanted to say a tool. Then I thought, no, he was more of a tool shed. And then I just... Fuck it. The guy was a whole hardware store. This guy was... I th I he, had, he had been. a wife and he had girlfriends. Yes. Yeah. It's also... It's a co-worker. Whether you thought he was a jerk or you thought he was funny, you saw him every day. I, and he probably, when he died, probably, I, I didn't give two shits. Yeah, it wasn't. Either. I mean, I thought 
I thought I wasn't going to care. And then he got shot, and I'm like, oh, I kind of, I'm a little sad because he, he may be a tool shed, but he wasn't evil. He didn't technically do anything wrong except cheat on his wife, but. <laughs> he didn't deserve to die. You know? All right, all right. He may not have deserved to die. You're right. I wasn't, I wasn't crying when he left, though. Oh, I yeah. didn't cry either, but no, I was a little, little scared. Oh. I think I thought maybe he uh, maybe fooled around yeah. with all those girls that were crying. That they that's had fresh that's on completely them. possible. <laughs> well, what I was what I was thinking about it was more. They're not they're not law enforcement. They're not FBI. Yeah. They're not really ex- expecting to die in their job because their job is yeah. more behind the scenes. You know, upper level. They're spies. So, well, spies don't n- don't normally get killed though. That's the thing. It's like a big there deal are when. Yeah. It's like there are a different big deal levels when, spy than James Bond. Yeah, you know? yeah. Right. They're not Bonds. They're not out in the field all the time. No. So um, it was like not advice. And then, and then the way they put it together, like this person, they didn't call law enforcement. They didn't call the sheriff or the police department. They called our number directly. Our number is unlisted. They <laughs> they had to have known to call our guys to set them up in the field to watch them to catch this guy all alone and then kill him execution style. Of course they blamed uh you know Stark. Yeah. yeah. Maintained Peggy's cover the yeah. whole time. Cuz you know mm-hmm. guy in the back said isn't the you know the British chick isn't she with you? Oh I know, right? I was like, "Oh shit." Yeah. Yeah. Like, <laughs> just going to say something. Dude, just worry about your broken arm. Yeah, really. <laughs> that's that's when I knew they were dead. When he started mm. blowing Peggy's cover, and I was mm-hmm. like, yeah, "Yeah, they ain't getting out of this." No. Well, as soon as I saw that car following, I'm like, "Oh, they're so dead!" Mm-hmm. And then they had to stop at the train. At first, I thought the car was going to push him in front of the train. From yeah, behind. yeah, that's <laughs> what I thought was coming too. I mean, the scene started. I'm like, "All right, he's dead." There's no. Like, I thought you know the guy was going to choke him, and then you see the car. I'm like, "Oh, he's going to push him onto the train tracks," and then he stops for the train, and that doesn't happen. I'm like, "What the? What's going to happen here?" And then, what's your end game? Yeah, what's your end game? And I wasn't expecting the shooting, but it worked. Shooting mm-hmm. with some kind of energy weapon. <laughs> no, I think it has silencer on it. Silence. it silencer. Silencer. But um, they don't actually sound. No, they're called <laughs> suppressors. They're but, quiet suppressors. Well, that's what they are actually called. Yeah. It's still fucking loud. Yeah. But anyway. That's, I think, that for this episode, right? Mm, well, Peggy, you know, questioned Jarvis, and mm. <sighs> she's feeling more like maybe there's some secrets that people just aren't telling her. Well, it's obvious. Mm-hmm. I mean, she thought she could just do without him not telling her, but she was just like, nope, I can't do it. I have to know. Mm-hmm. Sorry. I mean, she wanted to respect him, his uh, his privacy, but she's like, no, I, got, I actually have I gotta to know. know. I, I gotta, gotta know. know. I gotta know. Yeah. I you're gotta having... know. Talk to yourself being so British. I'm going to pry. <laughs> I'm hunting down crates full of temperamental objects. I'm. I need to know things. I love her book, though. Yeah, that uh, I forgot to put that in. It was the, like William Shakespeare shows up his books of si- different symbols in it. Yeah. The, col- like, yeah, that's the collected great. works of William Shakespeare, book of symbols. <laughs> That's not Shakespeare. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I thought that that's was a, kind of cool. That's a nifty way to hide your super secret books. <laughs> your super secret books of yeah. symbols. Of symbols. things you may not want other people to know you look into. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's going to be the down. That's going to be it. That's how they're going to find her out at the whatever the hell the name of that place is. SSR. No, yeah. no, 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 no. At the boarding house, Miss Fry oh. is going to walk in and be like, Ooh, Shakespeare. I love Shakespeare. And open it up and start reading and be like, What is this? You worship the devil. <laughs> <laughs> Satan. Um, oh, no. What else? No, well, she'll I'm show her to the sacrificial pit in the basement. <laughs> There's got to be a sacrificial pit in the basement. Yeah. Or on the roof. No, it's just take them <laughs> to, to uh, where was that? Puerto Rico or Cuba or whatever. Let's don't what if, yeah. what if, the old crotchety lady was behind it all. Because she already said she didn't usually rent to dancers because they're flighty. And she's she Leviathan. 
Yeah. And she, and she didn't really want to rent to a uh, Carter at first. She was like, are you sure you're going to obey by these rules? Are you sure you're going to do this? Huh. Yes, I, will. I don't know. I'm just guessing. <laughs> I'm just throwing shit out and seeing if it sticks. She's behind the whole I'm thing. I'm only going to work until I... <laughs> <laughs> Right that, now, we that, can throw out anything, and it can be possible. That's got more. That's got more sense behind it than the whole uh, Jarvis's wife isn't real idea. <laughs> <laughs> she's behind it. No, Miss Fry is behind the whole thing, and Angie's in on it, which is why she's <laughs> yeah. so buddy buddy. There you My go. Job. She's pumping her for information. I don't know. Right. I just well, you know, it just seems weird. I don't know. They all seem really weird now. I'm gonna have a new nickname for this woman every week. By the way. Okay. I swear it. This week, it's... What did I name her? I forgot. Queen Hard-Ass Paragon of Celibacy. I'll come up with something <laughs> better for next week. Um. So that's that episode. Still good show. I, mm-hmm. Oh, so, God. Keeps so, me entertained. So... Very much I heard the ratings are hard, though. Yeah, the ratings aren't as hot as I would expect, but you know what? Uh, yeah. Fuck that's the ratings. Sweet. Yeah. Didn't they have an article about that saying uh, we don't really care about the ratings for this show because it's yeah. it's it's meant as a winter break type show and yeah yeah it's you know it's the That's we learned our it... lesson with Once Upon a Time in Wonderland <laughs> and I know right yeah you know, we learned our lesson so we're gonna show this during the winter break instead of side by side which is with Agents of Shield which wouldn't have worked it would have been too no. exactly you've been confused you'd been like been throwing back into the future and then throwing back into the yeah. past. You'd be like, oh, where am I at now? My theory. <laughs> my theory. Jarvis's mm-hmm. wife is related to Black Widow somehow. <gasps> they mentioned Budapest. The Bud- yeah. The Budapest. Are we going to find out what happens in Budapest? Because I think <laughs> the entire the internet wants to know. I think he's excited. <laughs> I could throw out the whole, you know, Peggy's Tony's mom, but John will freak out. Peggy is... Peggy is Tony Stark's mother, and Jarvis is, Mrs. No. Jarvis is Black Widow's mother. The mothers of the Avengers. Imagine mother. You know, it, it really wouldn't. It really wouldn't be that that uh, far fetched. No, maybe wouldn't be far fetched. <sighs> one one night where Peggy takes her guard down and is vulnerable to Howard, and Donald takes us one time. We know he's a. Tra- he, yep, she this said. Is intercourse. He tried kissing me on VE Day, and I knocked him into the river. Yeah. Well, that was a, that was a, a, that was a joke. It was, it was, well, it was a lie. Yeah. To get, to get Daniel to think that, Tony, uh, that Howard wouldn't go near water. Yeah, that's true. Because the whole reason she said it was they had to fish him out of the Thames. Right. He could swim. <laughs> because they were talking about his jet ski and. Yeah. yeah. Well, There's it's also jet- possible that she did throw him into a river if the, he tried the, to kiss her. That's quite yeah, possible. It's not. It's not far fetched, but no. no, it's not. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was just to, to get Daniel the, off the trail. Wait, Angie's Tony's mom. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> At some point in this in this show, we will find out we'll who find Tony out Stark's who Tony's mother is. is. Yes, exactly. We'll find out who she is. It'll happen. Yep, it's mm-hmm. a thing. Probably. It's the leader of the boarding house. That's Tony Stark's mom. Oh, God, no. (laughs) She's too old. I don't think her her eggs are dusty. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) Don't stop vomiting on your bed. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I guess you're sleeping on the floor tonight, the two of you. Anyway, next episode is called The Blitzkrieg Button. Blitzkrieg Bop. Blitzkrieg Bop. I, I want a button that starts a Blitzkrieg. I mean, seriously, is that what Hitler had? He had a, a red button on a remote yeah. control and just went, boop. And it's like, oh, look, there's no more Poland. Boop. Oh, look, Belgium has surrendered. <laughs> right. It almost was that easy. <laughs> yeah, no, you're right. Well, it seemed like it was that easy at the time, I guess. Boop. Well, you know, when you have that much force behind you, people fold pretty fucking easy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. I have... In the future episodes, how how is the uh, Leviathan going to contact their agent since they already repoed that that uh, typewriter? Uh, typewriter. The fifty six K modem. Uh. <laughs> well, the modem looked like it was made out of uh, battery accessible <laughs> items, so just I, make it. You know what I, you're doing. 
it was probably had a lot more advanced circuitry under there than yeah they don't yeah, know what it is. It's not made out of household there items. Is, I bet you, I bet you is, Peggy uh, knows what it is. I bet you she's seen something like that in Howard's place, and she knows what it is, and she's going to be the one to figure it no, out. No, I, I have to look this up. I'm pretty sure well, the transistor wasn't I, even I, invented I, yet. There is one thing, though, from the last episode the, you know, of this show that I do want to bring up, and that's that's the whole um, – the but, the keys were falling as the, as the hammers were striking the paper. Mm-hmm. And that's because it's a fully mechanical keyboard, and so the the keys actually press the the thing that makes the the hammer strike the paper. Yeah. So when the hammer is striking the paper, that button would automatically sink because there's nothing holding it up anymore. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Huh. <laughs> yeah. This is 1946. Yeah. Transistors weren't invented for another year. I don't well, know why see, I have to think that up. Well, you know, all the secret spies and stuff like that. I mean, the advance in technology, we, you know, yes, they could have had it before. He has an atomic back scratcher. You're right. Yeah. yeah. And, yeah. Not impossible. <laughs> so, anyway, I'm off topic. Blitz green well, buttons. Um, next episode is about Peggy may... Uh, here's the synopsis. Peggy may be in more trouble than usual when, when fugitive Howard Stark suddenly returns for a mysterious reason. And Chief Dooley chases a new clue all the way to Europe that threatens to destroy Peggy's future at the SSR. That that sounds like your typical Agents of Shield uh, thing. It is yeah. a typical Agents of Shield synopsis. One member one may of the be in team, danger. One member may be in danger, and they may die. And this person from the past comes, and you know, whatever. It's <laughs> you know, until the mid-season break for Agents of Shield, um, all of those synopsis were bullshit. <laughs> It's just as bad as The Walking Dead. Yeah. Did they mention Coulson? Well, I mean, being in danger and actually dying are two different things. No. I don't know. It seems from the little preview of next week's show has a lot to do with um, Captain America. Yeah. Well, we shall see. Well, it's got to do with whatever Howard is hiding, so it's probably (sighs) going to bring a path. Well, I wonder what he's hiding. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Howard it Stark. Is not <laughs> Interesting. Anyway, that's our show. So, you know, all these buttons. Too many buttons. All the buttons. Too many buttons. Oh, okay. Erica, where can they find you? Because yours popped up first. <laughs> <laughs> On Twitter at Erica Rain Seven. Okay. Um. That's it. And Rachel, oh. your turn. My turn. Hey, find me on Twitter at Savannah Seventeen. And Cleo. You can find me at Cleo Moto all over the internet. All over the internet, scattered. Why does everyone repeat rivers. that when I say it? You and Dom. Every time I say all over, you both repeat it. All right. over. John's turn. Hello. Hi. You can find me there. There. That was not <laughs> there. That was Holy, <laughs> wait, that kind of- I gotta dodge the thing. <laughs> 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 there, there, you have a nice little window. You got a little window. <laughs> You're letterboxed now. You're letterboxed now. Enjoy it. <laughs> this is actually the opposite of letterboxing. But sure. Damn it, it's no, too far away. It is the opposite of this. I'm gonna seduce you with this my eyes, internet. I'm sorry. Alright, to stop people from being creeped out, there, now they're black screened. Oh, damn it. <laughs> anyway, you can find me on Twitter and there. other places on the internet at Philodrin, right there. Um, you can find all of us on Twitter, YouTube, Facebook, Google+, MySpace, and probably other places that they haven't informed me about at ASOTV Podcast, all one word. Follow us there for some more podcasts for some of your favorite TV shows. Till next week, the opposite of letterboxing says goodbye. No, it is letterboxing. I was I was mistaken. <sighs> Hand and scan is the opposite of letterboxing. You know, <sighs> amateurs. Sorry, know, right? amateur hour. It's been a while. Totally thought this was your job. <laughs> <laughs>